August 27th, Sunday, 2017. It is day 220 in the Donald Trump White House regime. After Hurricane Harvey, Houston is now underwater. And FEMA, God bless their little souls, say they're going to be there for years. Who knows, maybe even decades. Sounds a little like Afghanistan. You see, that's why you never let a monster grow too big. You let the federal government grow too big, and now we literally have to wait for the monster to die from hunger. The only way this monster is going to die is if we take away funding or if they cannot find any money. You see, the major problem that I have with the federal government or governments in general is they prevent real winners and they prevent real losers. When the government gets involved and they give their friends and their contractors billions and billions of dollars in contracts, well, it doesn't matter how dumb these contractors are. It doesn't matter if these people are idiots and morons. The only thing that matters is they're friends with the government. And then the government, who's playing with somebody else's money, it's easy for the government to hand over their money or your money to their friends. And you can see where it creates a mess in the free market where you, you don't get real winners and you don't get real losers. That's why there are probably about 96 million Americans sitting on the sidelines. They have no job, they have no pension, and they have no hope. It doesn't mean they're losers. It means they cannot play in the game because the government is playing with all the fake money and they only give their stupid, idiotic, moronic, moron friends the money. You see? So the way I see it is all the people who don't have a job, they're probably the most smartest group in America. The people who have the government contractor jobs, they're the dumbest because they didn't earn it. They just won a contract. And of course, if you win that contract through the government, you know you have friends. And sometimes they don't even have a lottery to win the contract. Sometimes the government just gives it to him. Yeah, this system is a mess. But don't tell any of this to Donald Trump because Donald Trump's in love with FEMA. Just like George Bush was and Obama was. You see, it doesn't matter who's sitting in the White House. The deep state does exactly what they want. And what does the deep state want? Well, they want to spend your money. It's probably going to take another $666 billion to give FEMA whatever they want to do for as many decades as they want to stay in Texas, for every single poor baby they want to save in Texas. It'll probably cost taxpayers another $666 billion. But who cares? They're playing with fake money. You see, that's why no president can ever be tough. You see, a tough president would just tell whatever state it was, like Texas, well, good luck, Texas. I hope you get your shit together, but you know what? The federal government, we don't, ha we don't have any money to help you. We'll get all the donations we can to help you, but uh, the federal government is broke. We don't have any money. See, there'll never be a president that's that tough. Never will be, because they'll run him out of town. They'll run him out of the swamp. So, like I said, the only thing that's going to have to happen is the federal government's going to have to go broke. They're going, they're, they're going to spend every last single penny that they can take out of thin air. They're going to create the money out of thin air until, well, until they can no longer do it. And trust me, that day will come. There'll be a day that comes where they can create as many zillions and zillions of dollars they want to. But if the people don't want them, if the people don't take them, well, that's when the game's over. And that's when people are going to have to make it on their own. That's when we're going to see the real winners and the real losers. That's the day that real Americans should hope and pray for. The day when we have real winners and real losers. Just go into any, just go into any government agency. It doesn't matter whether it's federal, local, state, county. Just go into any government building and look at the morons they got working in there. Yeah, one day... 
Well, we can hope and pray that one day there will truly be winners and losers in America. But until that day, we'll just sit on the couch eating our popcorn and watch the show. We'll just watch the whole thing come collapsing down. Who knows, at some point they might even knock on our door and say, Hey, would you like to join the game? And I say, no thanks, as long as the poker game is rigged, I'd rather sit out. If we do a Google on Donald Trump today, we get about 285 million results in .59 seconds. Well, Mexico reiterates in the words of Vincente Fox, We ain't paying for that fucking wall! <laughs> oh, Fox, they, they reiterate, they're not going to pay for that wall. And of course, mainstream media, they're... Crying again. What's Donald Trump going to do? Our city's underwater. Houston's underwater. What is the president of the United States going to do? We're such little babies. We didn't prepare for this. And Donald Trump, the FEMA lover that he is, major rescue operations are underway. I'm Donald Trump. I can see him looking in the mirror right now with that sophisticated... Arrogant nose in the air and he says, I am the Mussolini fascist emperor wannabe and I will send my FEMA troops down to Texas. They will be there for decades and we will clean this mess up. I will sign the executive order giving $666 billion to my FEMA army. I would send the normal army, but... They're too busy over there, what, 6,000 miles away, piddling around in some desert, throwing trillions of dollars down a black hole. So let me get this straight. Our real army, which should be protecting our borders, is over in Afghanistan, Syria, Germany, Korea, and every other godforsaken country in the world, while our borders are unsecure, no troops on our borders, and then when we do have an emergency, and we could probably use some troops to help out in a city like Houston, well, they're 6,000 miles away. So, of course, you need a federal government agency like FEMA if we're going to spend trillions of dollars and give it to all those overseas bastards. Well, at some point, a five-year-old, a fifth grader could figure out that we're going to run out of money. Our troops should be here on our border. When there's an emergency in any big city or small city or any community in America, we'd have our troops here to help out. We would not need a monster like the FEMA organization. Well, enough of this rant. People are going to say, Bravo, Vom Eula, you evil bastard. How could you forsake and forget those poor people of Houston. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying do away with FEMA. And of course you have a, we have a beautiful country who could get donations. We could get donations together and help those poor people. But like I say, we need our, gut, we need our military back home. And yes, we could send our military boys in there to help out. And we could send those FEMA people to hell. That's where I want the FEMA to go. I want FEMA to go straight to hell. And unfortunately, Americans are not as tough as they used to be. There's probably millions and millions of little snowflakes down there who actually say, I need the government's help. I want the president to come down and visit me. And that's exactly what Donald Trump's going to do. Just like George Bush. Gonna jump on a helicopter and head down to Texas like George Bush did to Katrina. Except Donald Trump will try to make it a little earlier in the game, you know, but it doesn't matter. The snowflakes are still gonna hate him no matter what he does. And I hope he doesn't wear no stupid cowboy hat. Now don't get me wrong, I like cowboy hats just like the next guy. But, you know, a New York carpetbagger coming down to Texas during an emergency with a cowboy hat on, it just wouldn't go right. But, uh... What's Paris Jackson saying here about Trump? She's calling him, a, calling him a Nazi white supremacist jerk. I mean, it doesn't matter what Donald Trump does, and he's trying so hard. That's the problem. Donald Trump is trying so hard to please these little snowflakes, and they're never going to like him, ever. He might as well just give up. I can even imagine that would have been um, Steve Bannon's advice to Trump. Just give up on those leftist snowflake 
sissies. I mean, they're never going to like Trump. But Donald Trump, he wants everybody to like him. Deep down, that, that's one of Donald Trump's problems. He wants everybody to like him. And it, it hurts him badly if you don't like him. And, well, he's in the wrong game because America is divided. We are divided right down the middle. And I, as I've said a thousand times, there's no longer any dialogue. There's no longer any conversation. Pick a side. Pick a side now, like Pat Buchanan said, because there ain't no talking anymore. You think those weirdos downtown are going to agree with me on anything? Hell no. And you think I'm going to agree with those weirdos downtown on anything? Hell no. I mean, discussion is over. Now it's time for a pecking order. That's all it is now. It's time, it's time for a pecking order. Who's going to be in charge and who's going to be down at the bottom? It's, you know, sure, that could get ugly, the pecking order. You ever see dogs fight it out? It gets ugly. But at the end of the fight, the, there's a dog on top. And the dog that loses, he eats second. End of story. See, once they have that battle... The top dog eats first, and the weaker dog eats second, and everybody's happy. The sooner they get it done, the sooner everybody's happier. Again, I go back to the government creating winners and losers. You're never going to have that battle as long as the government is choosing the winners. It looks like Jared Kushner and Ivanka, they're not having a good time in Washington, D.C. The Washington, D.C. elite does not like them. Well, to be honest with you, I don't think anybody likes them except for maybe their parents. Oh, okay, the international bankers like them. The dual citizens like them. Germany, Angela Merkel, Fraulein Merkel likes them. And, of course, Bibi likes them. Basically, anybody who's involved in the central banking scam likes that power couple, but most Americans hate their guts. So let's see what Steve Bannon is up to. Now I think it's the New York Times is questioning, what if Steve Bannon is right? What if America is going to collapse? Everybody's starting to worry. Sebastian Gorka, he's gone, but he come up with a Star Wars analogy. Yes, he says that now that he and Steve Bannon are back at Breitbart, they are going to be more powerful than ever taking a line from Star Wars where Ben Kenobi says, If you strike me down, I will be more powerful than you can ever imagine. Sometimes I think these people in public office up there, I believe they're delusional. The sad fact is that when the shit hits the fan, you know where our Hungarian friend's going to go to? Our Hungarian friend is going to he head to the United Kingdom. And if he doesn't get a good job at the United Kingdom, then he'll head to Hungary and he'll say, America, you know, you're on your own. I mean, I can read these people like a cheap novel. And matter of fact, if there's anybody new out there, remember this. Anybody who's in a position of power, like the one that Sebastian Gorka held, works for them. They will never let you and me in a position of power. That's just plain and simple. And for further proof of that fact, uh, just try to remember what mainstream media, how did mainstream media treat Dr. Ron Paul? They pummeled him. They ripped him to pieces. He's one of the greatest American heroes ever. Dr. Ron Paul, one of the greatest Americans ever. Now he's no longer in office and they're still afraid of him. And look what YouTube is doing. YouTube is economically censoring him. Trust me, they're doing that to a lot of people, just not Dr. Ron Paul. I mean, every one of my videos, every single one of my videos is marked like they did to Ron Paul. The problem is, I'm a nobody, and Dr. Ron Paul is special. He's an American hero. And when you got YouTube coming down hard on Dr. Ron Paul, well, you know we're a divided country. How can a bunch of idiots and morons who work over there in little cubicles have the audacity and the nerve to persecute an American hero like Ron Paul. I mean, it's, it's sacrilegious. Matter of fact, those little snowflakes over there on YouTube, they could not shine Dr. Ron Paul's shoes. That's how bad they are. And they have, I don't even want to, I don't have any words for how stupid they are.
Well, let's go to the Hurricane Harvey aftermath, where Houston is underwater. But don't worry, because the big federal government's coming down to help you. Washington, D.C. bureaucrats, the big FEMA executives, they're going to come down and help you guys get back on your feet. They're going to be there for decades, probably, whether you like it or not. That's how it is. You take the money, you got to take their abuse. And looky here, look where the water line is, all the way up to the stop sign. I mean, sooner or later, the water will drain away. But after the water drains away, you're still going to have the FEMA boys there. You know, the weird part is, all the local governments and county governments, they love the federal governments. You know, all these governments are in bed together now. I can remember a time when local governments and county governments didn't want to have anything to do with the federal government. They, had, they did not want to have anything to do with the federal government. The local officials wanted to run their towns the way they wanted to. But now things have changed in the last 30 years because of the free money. Washington, D.C. gives out so much free money, but all these people in local governments and county governments, I mean, they work together with the federal government. Shit, there's probably more federal employees in Houston now than local government. I mean, the whole thing's so messed up. I'm, okay, I'm, I'm going to give up on talking about governments because it's a lost cause. Now we're going to talk about real Americans, real people. We are divided. I've said that before. But here's something I don't think I've ever heard before from a big government official. This is strange. And it's refreshing that somebody would tell the truth. Mad Dog Mattis tells the U.S. troops that America has problems. It's true. And he urges them to hold the line until we get back to respecting each other. Well, that's where I politely disagree. The general says, he tells the troops to hold the line until the U.S. is less divided. Again, I have to disagree because, as I've said before, there ain't no more conversation. There is no dialogue between myself and a snowflake. Anybody who's going to listen to one of those lefty snowflakes and submit, if you submit to a leftist snowflake, well, you might as well just go sit down on the couch and watch the Karda Kardashians eat your cream puffs. I mean, what kind of American is going to submit to those leftist snowflakes? Not a real American, not a real American man. If you submit to them, like again, you might as well eat your cheese puffs and some Twinkies, sit on the couch all day and give up. No. When a big storm hits, when a hurricane Har Harvey hits, you've got to be able to rebuild. When the water goes away, you rebuild. Can't do that eating Twinkies and cheese puffs. And you ever notice how all the people that Donald Trump is firing are Gentiles? You ever notice that? Kind of strange, isn't it? This cannot be a coincidence. You got all those people like Jared Kushner and... Cone and the rest of them. All the dual citizens seem to be safely snuggled into the White House with no problem. But if you're a Gentile, you're being like pushed out the door. How weird is that? Well, reports are coming in that these snowflakes were triggered by the Conor McGregor remarks after his loss to Mayweather. I gotta give McGregor credit. He did pretty good. He lasted a long time. He's with his feet tied behind his back. I mean, basically, you've got a, a karate, MMA fighter, a wrestler. I mean, you cannot tie their feet up. You cannot tie their elbows up. You cannot. A wrestler's got to be a wrestler. He did a pretty good job in there with an undefeated champion boxer. Got to give him that much. Well, we already talked about Ron Paul being persecuted by YouTube. Ron Paul is probably used to it. He's been persecuted by tougher and stronger people than YouTube. I think I missed that part where Vietnam is going to embrace Bitcoin. You know when the countries are embracing Bitcoin that the CIA is behind it. The central governments are somehow involved in Bitcoin. FEMA officials, we're going to be here for years, boys. Whether you like it or not, we're going to set up an office right over here and bring your papers in triplicate forms and we'll try to disperse that taxpayer money to you as soon as we get it, but in the meantime, I got a little golfing to do when the water subsides. 
You know, I almost hate to admit it, but I'm almost looking forward to the time when China starts unloading all their dollar assets, when China stops sending us all their junk, and our shelves are empty, and we have no factories re to replace the junk. So there we are, we're sitting with all the Walmart empty, all the shelves on Walmart are empty, and China's selling off their dollars and all their, I mean, it's going to be a nightmare, I hate to admit it, but there's going to be one good thing that's going to come out of it. The United States government is going to be broke. Oh, they'll start looking under every rock for your silver and your gold coins. So yeah, when China's done with us, they'll knock on your door and say, Citizen, move out of the way. Can you tell me where your silver and gold is? Because the government needs it to keep the doors open. It'll all be in the name of patriotism. Give us your copper. Give us your gold, your diamonds, any hard assets. Give it to the government because the government's in an emergency situation and we need to get together. We need to come together as snowflakes and help each other out because we're all equal and it's all going to end badly. Did I mention that huge factory that broke ground today that could employ 10,000 of us deplorable? Did I mention that? No, because you know it did not happen. Donald Trump is worried about Houston underwater. And I'm sure there'll be a whole lot of more problems in the future. He'll never ever get to that factory because there'll just be always something better to do. Americans, just you have to be, you, you've got to be happy with your snap card. That's what it comes down to today. Be happy with your snap card. Because Obama was very, very generous to give you that snap card. I mean, I'm sure when he's sitting on Sir Richard Branson's private island over there, or whenever he's hanging out with those rich billionaires in their private islands, I'm sure Obama's thinking to himself, yes, I took care of those Americans. I gave them a snap card. So I don't feel guilty about sitting here on Sir Richard Branson's private island. No. In fact, Obama will tell you to your face that he did a mighty, mighty good job to America. And it's time for Donald Trump to finish us off. In fact, their work is almost done here now.